On today's rant, I want to talk about one example of people who get preferential treatment for having a vice and people who are punished for not having that vice. What is up with smoking breaks? People who are addicted to, cat, to the nicotine in the cigarette are frequently out on smoking breaks. In fact, the college where I work has spent a great deal of money to provide places for them to smoke and to set up signage all over the place that most of the smokers ignore because very rarely do they go 100 feet from the building. And on a day like this, when it's supposed to be 104 degrees this afternoon, I understand that except for I didn't make you smoke. And I'm not telling you to keep doing it, so I don't see why I should have to walk through a cloud of your haze. But this goes way back to when I was in high school. My senior year of high school, I worked for a rental car company down at the airport. And uh, it was because it was an airport location, it was pretty high traffic, high energy, high octane, high throughput, and high stress. There was this one day in particular, I recall, where having at the tender age of 18, maybe 17 at the time, recently dealt with an exceptionally egregious and combative man at the counter, I stepped out back to just calm my jets and collect my nerves before I went back into the counter. The manager of the location came out on, to the back there. There were three other men there who were on their smoking break and demanded that I get back in and go to work. And I have been angry about that ever since, that because I'm not addicted to cigarettes, I am the one who has to go back in and go to work. I have no idea how long they were out there. It didn't really matter. I just needed some time to calm down before I talked to another customer. And it was all right, because now I'm angry, not at a customer. I'm angry at my boss, and that doesn't usually bear out with customers at the counter so much. But it has bothered me ever since that because you're addicted to nicotine, you get special breaks. There are no special breaks for me to just calm down and collect my center before I go back to work. And you can use that to avoid work. Now fast forward to 2015, where the public employees healthcare system to which I belong offered special incentives and extra money for people who were interested in getting materials to help them quit smoking. At the same time, they took away the incentive that I was getting for meeting certain benchmarks wearing a Fitbit. At that time, I could get up to $50 a month off of my medical benefit if I was engaged in healthy activities. I didn't smoke, never have, never planned to, except for when I'm walking near people who are, who don't walk enough from the door. Even there was someone who smoked in the bathroom here yesterday, which is pretty funny. Um, but uh, I, I would get $50 off. Well, they took that away, and instead they were providing materials for nicotine patches and counseling and extra things to help people quit smoking, which I understand, except for why did you take away the reward from me Who, because I'm already healthy? Does it, what kind of a message does that send? We live in a world, we live in a country, we live in a time where vice is openly granted privilege and where virtue is openly mocked, berated, belittled, and um, punished. We live in a world where if you are don't feel like you're the right gender, where we'll make a special bathroom for you. Where if you're too lazy to learn the language of the land, we'll make a special ballad for you in your native tongue. And the amount of effort, <laughs> and we'll send $40 billion to Ukraine, but we won't approve a bill for $48 billion for relief in our own country. Not that I agree that bill should have been passed either, but we bend over backwards for people who don't do anything, who are the problem, and punish those who are not causing problems. But I guess it's always been that way. I remember back in elementary school where we'd all have to put our heads down because somebody was mouthing off and we'd all get punished for one person. I long for a time, for a world, for the opportunity to not have to suffer so much for other people and bear their burdens and have nothing to show for it myself. We reward people for engaging in aberrant and abhorrent behaviors and then punish people, not directly, but indirectly, who are minding their own business. Just this week, there was a shooting in Texas, and while it's appalling and I hate them all and and I, and I feel bad for all of the victims, they're going to punish everyone who owns a gun because one person who recently bought guns for that purpose bought them for that purpose and used them to kill a bunch of people. Why are we all being punished for the sins of a few? 
20 years ago, when a few terrorists flew some airplanes into some buildings in New York City, we were told not to judge all of them by the actions of a few. And in the last 20 years, I have watched as those same people who were apologists for the terrorists have become the exact opposite towards the citizens of this nation, where all of you are judged by the actions of a few in order to achieve a political advantage. I do not see a way in which incentivizing people who have vices and rewarding them with additional help, additional funds, additional support, and additional concessions, while either ignore, at best ignoring, but at worst punishing those who are doing the right thing, sets up a civil society that can long endure. They're lucky that January 6th of this year was not a big deal, because if the people who were there had really been upset, there might have been more than tea thrown in the harbor. If you've got advice, I get it. I have one too. Students ask me every semester when I tell them I've never done drugs, never smoked, never drank. Do you have any vices? And I said, yeah, my drug is sugar. And maybe you can tell by looking at me. It's habit forming. It's also delicious. <laughs> it's also plant-based, organic, and all natural, which they can't say of you know, some of their uh, addictions and uh, obsessions. But when we live in a world where you are given special privileges for doing something immoral, illegal, or unethical, and you're given special punishments or ignored completely for doing the things that are right, you have to wonder how long society can so long endure. It's been that way for a long time. I don't think it'll ever change, but I think it will cause an upheaval in this society. And I hope I don't live to see the day when this country collapses into anarchy and chaos. Because, not for myself, because I should be okay, but for my nieces and my nephew, who will have to slug their way through the filth and the muck and hopefully emerge on the other side. Marcus Aurelius, the good emperor of Rome, wrote about religion. He was not religious, but he did advise us all to live a good life, to be the best we can be, to get rid of whatever vices we can and build whatever virtues that we can. Because if there is a God, he'll reward us. And if there is not a God, well, then you lived your best life. I see members of Gen Zulu saying this all the time. I'm living my best life by partying, drinking, doing drugs, and engaging in infidelity and fornication. You keep using this word. I do not think it means what you think it means. There is good, and then there is pleasurable. And you don't have to become an ass to see that Pleasure Island is not there to make you happy. If you have a, an addiction, get some help. If you are having troubles, talk to somebody. We are not alone on this earth. In fact, there's more people here than I would like. It was nice to drive here this morning with no school traffic because school is out. Um, but we don't have to be alone. We don't have to face this alone. And for those of you who support me or listen to me or pass on what I say, I appreciate that because it makes me feel a little bit less alone and a little bit less crazy in a world that seems to be out of its mind. Godspeed. Good luck. Happy Friday.